Have you ever worked with classes that are thousands of lines long? These classes end up encapsulating tens of related functionality, and you end up repeating the class's name hundreds of times. But not today. I'm Quantic Dave, and today we will clean up some mess using method chaining. Alright, so the inspiration for the video comes from my recent mass refactor of our test framework at the office. Like many other complex system developers, we had our custom end-to-end -end testing framework to be able to test our software just like end users would do. But it has been neglected for about two years now. While modernizing it, I've decided to introduce method chaining to it, which I think was a good investment of time. Before diving into specifics, let me summarize what method chaining is for you. Method chaining is an idiom in object-oriented languages, where an object's method returns a reference to the object itself. This way, method calls can be chained together, without requiring variables to store the intermediate method call results. Imagine a database object. To be able to use it for the first time on an empty database, you first need to connect your database, then initialize it. In code, it would be something like this. This is not too bad. You only have to reference the database object twice. But imagine if you could chain these calls. Much nicer, isn't it? And it will become much better in situations where it saves you 5-6 object references. If you like, you can put each method call on a new line, so it will be easier to use debug points. Here is an example using Python syntax. I find method chaining to be an excellent utility for classes with lots of small and relevant functionality. Objects encapsulating database queries, test code, and UI code are great examples of this. Now let's go ahead and investigate the implementation of our database class from the previous example. In its current shape, you cannot chain the methods in this class. It's an easy fix though. All we have to do is to finish each method with a return self statement. So each method will return a reference to the object itself. Now we can safely chain the methods in our database class. As you might have realized, any function that needs to return something other than the object itself won't be chainable. Method chaining can also be used to build fluent interfaces or implement the builder pattern. If you want to read more on the subject, I have links to several wiki articles in the video description. Now let's analyze the benefits and drawbacks of method chains. The benefit of method chaining is obvious. Cleaner and concise code. You don't have to keep repeating the calls to the same objects for consecutive operations on the same object, which is especially useful in repetitive code like the test code. You also don't need to create temporary variables to store the results from previous method calls. However, this will make it difficult to put debug points on the right method in the chain. To get around this limitation, we can separate each method call with a new line. One interesting side effect of method chaining is that it will make logging harder. You normally put logging code in between method calls like this. Once you switch to method chaining, you might add a simple chainable log method to your class to work around this problem. In conclusion, method chaining is not a silver bullet, but for where it fits, it brings conciseness and clarity, which I always like. In my experience, tests and data filtering and manipulation code are prime candidates for method chaining. Next time you are going to implement a framework or a utility class, you can provide chainable methods to make life easier for the prospective users of that code. You might have noticed that I've used various code animations for this video. I will make a separate video on how I make my animated code videos. If you don't want to miss it, don't forget to sub. I also have a ton of other programming and algorithm articles. If you want to check them out, head over to quanticdev.com. In the future, I will make all the articles into a condensed and guided course, so watch out for that. And that is it for this quick guide. I will see you next time.